What's up, MindZ survivors? A new update has arrived on MindZ. This update is a tiny one, focused entirely on bug fixes. Oh wait, just kidding. After more than seven months of speculation, countless memes, and hundreds of hours of testing and work, it's here. Update 4.0.0 for MindZ introduces a game-changing feature to the decades-old game, the Bank and PVE Island. The new PVE island, also known as the Meridian, or Starter Island, is a completely separate island from the MindZ map. In lore, this island is located south of the continent. This large island is a safe haven for those who have fled the zombie outbreak on sailing ships. First up, the Meridian itself. The Meridian is an entirely new island to build. It consists of a large sandy island with a large volcano in the middle. This island will completely replace the old spawn lobby. Players are completely immune from damage while in the Meridian, making it ideal for new players. Players will also not have to worry about thirst or hunger while here. The Meridian's main feature is a small community where players will spawn. This small town features a tavern, market stalls, a small clearing with a sycamore tree, and a wall with the overview of the Mindsy world. The main Mindsy mainland has also been officially named with this update. It's now known as the continent of Velar. To reach Velar, players can choose from a series of spawns by heading down to the docks. Eight sailing ships await, each one taking players to one of the major spawn towns. Therefore, non-premium players can now choose their spawns, though they are limited to Cacho, Grimdale, Pravis, Portsmouth, Belfarm, Romero, Carmi, and Guten. Premium players can talk to Oliver the Navigator, one of the many new NPCs in the Meridian, where they can choose from the variety of spawns like before. To accommodate each of these new spawns, each of the eight ships has been added to the Mindsy world itself. For some of these locations, new builds have been added, such as a dock or even a lighthouse. For some of these locations, chests have also been added, giving a looting opportunity when players get off the ships. Another big change is how players can now get to the Meridian from the main continent. The same NPCs are on the ships at the spawn towns. Clicking on them gives an option to teleport back to the Meridian. There's now a way to get back spawn items without dying or killing oneself. In the central square of the Meridian sits Baldric the Supplier, who can give back starting items if players don't have it in their inventories. This is most convenient for players who wish to get a new grapple or a new speed pot after using theirs in the world. There's various NPCs that are scattered around this new Meridian. Some may give bits of lore alluding to the MindZ lore, while others will give soulbound items to players. If players talk to each one, they will have a low durability wooden hoe, a low durability fishing rod, an empty bottle, and an apple. And finally, the crown of the Meridian. The Meridian Treasury contains two ender chests which serve as the bank. The bank is only accessible from the Meridian in these two chests meaning players will have to travel south to store their items. The bank is primarily composed of two sections. The first, the main bank, is two pages, containing 72 slots in total, or two player inventories. This main part of the bank can store almost every item obtainable and unobtainable in MindZ, but it cannot store soulbound items or bags. The other part of the bank is the legacy bank, this part of the bank is also two pages, or 72 slots. The Legacy Bank can only store items unobtainable in MindZ. This includes holiday rare items, retired legendaries, and cosmetic rare items. Bags and soul-bound items still cannot be stored here. 
With the new banking system comes a new way to trade with other players. Previously, players would organize trades and operate on trust to trade with others. Now there's a safe and official way to trade items. Players can now use slash trade player name or shift right click on another player to send them a request to trade. Here, players can confirm a trade and choose what they want to send. Trades can be initiated up to 20 blocks away and everything except for soulbound items can be traded. And now for some other changes. The Stillwater Swamp Cave entrance can now be used as an exit as well as an entrance. This is now the second exit to the Swamp Caves. Sunken Mire, a tier 3 dungeon in the northmost reaches of the swamp, has received a few changes to its build. The cave spiders, which dealt massive damage with their poison, have been changed to normal spiders. No longer is an infinity bow or several stacks of arrows a necessity for this dungeon. The ghost ship has moved again. Its previous location was near Pileus. And finally, there was a bug where certain items were usable in dungeons that weren't intended. This has been fixed. The bank will greatly change MindZ, as it allows players to free up extra accounts to use as player accounts, instead of keeping them as storage. New players will be able to play more freely, now being able to store valuable items when they're actually needed. This update is certain to change how MindZ is played. It's Silk Lover, and I'll see everyone out and about, and on a PvE island. Good luck, and stay safe out there.